Many sim racers aren't actually utilizing the full potential of the game. But as a matter of fact, there are many small tips and tricks that can help you improve your racing experience. In this video, we're diving into five settings that are holding you back in iRacing. Welcome back to a new Overtake GG video. My name is Marcus and I can't wait to teach you something that will enhance your iRacing experience. Let's get into it. Let's get all the boring but the all important stuff out the way first. While camera settings and FOV isn't the most exciting thing, it's incredibly important to have the correct field of view for your setup. It's what gives you the correct feeling of scale and distance inside the game, which is important especially for close racing and good lap times. Running too high of an FOV will make you feel like you're going faster than you actually actually are, and it will make the objects in your field of view seem smaller and further away. While having too low an FOV will make it seem like everything is zoomed in to a pretty extreme scale. But how do you figure out what FOV you should be running with? Because it is very dependent on your specific setup. Whether you're running single, triple or ultra wide, you need to use the calculator that can be found in settings graphics and then press the monitors button. Then a menu will pop up where you can enter your specific values for your sim. It's quite simple to just find a take measure, find the correct distances and then plug them into the calculator. It really isn't so hard, but it's incredibly important for getting the right distances and the right scale in sim. The only thing you really have to be aware of is the angle of your side monitors if you are running triples. The number you need to enter into the calculator isn't actually the inside angle, but whatever you might want to call this weird part of the outside angle. Let's just call this an interesting use of iRacing logic and uh, not think more about it, I guess. <laughs> now you might find that your FOV is more zoomed in than what you would actually like. What you can instead do is adjust your seating position within the car individually. All you've got to do is head over to the cockpit cam in replay, press Ctrl F12 and this menu pops up. You can then use the WASD keys to move around your position until you find something you like. You can also change the yaw and pitch by using Ctrl or Alt WASD. Once you're happy with your camera position, simply press save to car, save the file and the camera should be in the exact same position next time you load up the game. Now I quickly want to note that you can also use these settings in third person view. So as you can see, I'm moving around the camera and essentially just trying to get that perfect shot of the perfect angle that I actually want. This is something that's really practical, especially if you're taking pictures or it can actually be really useful if I need to look around the car for damage. As you can see here on the side, there's a bit of damage. I would, as a spotter, never have been able to see that if I was just looking from the back. So it's super practical to also help look around in third person and in spectator cam. So definitely make sure that you, you learn how to use this camera menu as it can be super useful. Now, as for pictures, the car will blow up on you unless you untick the dampen camera and set this setting to at car and then you can press forward a frame and the car will be in focus once again. Next up on the list is Active Reset. Now you might already know about this, but I don't see many people actually using the Active Reset function like you're supposed to. It's a function that allows you to reset the car to wherever you want on track when practicing in single player. This is incredibly practical, especially if you're struggling with specific corner combinations more than others. Simply set a restart point on the straight before the corner and then you can technically rerun that specific corner as many many times as you'd like. However, I would heavily advise that you moderate it because it's very easy to get out of flow and caught up in the same bad loop if you rerun the same corner 20 times in a row. I suggest setting a reset start point and then maybe rerunning the corner three to five times maximum. Then you can do another lap and when you come back to the corner, you can do the same thing. This prevents you from falling into the deep active reset rabbit hole. You can map your active reset buttons by heading to settings, bindings, and looking for the active reset start and active reset run bindings. Simply map these to your wheel and your keyboard and you're ready to run. Now, if you're finding these tips and tricks useful, make sure to subscribe to Overtake GG. It's completely free and we do our best to post quality sim racing content for you guys to enjoy. Now, let's get back to the video. Let's talk about keyboard shortcuts because they will make your life a lot easier, especially if you don't have a wheel with 900 buttons on it. Fortunately, there's plenty of space on your keyboard to map buttons. You just have to make sure that it's within the reach when you're driving. For example, I've got a little keyboard tray over on my left side, so it's very much within the reach and I can use it all the time when I'm driving. iRacing has already pre-mapped some of the most important keyboard shortcuts that might not fit onto your wheel, like Delta, 
texture, FPS and network display. A couple more important ones include Control F12 to bring up the camera menu, Control page up slash page down to increase and decrease the in-game UI size, Alt K to toggle UI edit and Control R to reload card textures if trading paints is failing you. You can of course also remap these onto your wheel but I personally prefer having in-car adjustments like brake bias and ARBs on my wheel. These are features that I'll be using way more often so having them right within reach of where I'm sitting is a lot easier than having to reach for the keyboard. Now that we have covered some in-game settings, let's cover some in-car settings because there are a lot of assumptions about traction control and ABS that I just want to clear up. Let's start out with traction control. It is a setting found on most cars and it basically detects if there is a loss of traction on one of the wheels and then it individually decreases the power for that specific wheel. This is quite useful, especially for preventing accidents or slides or spinning on the exit of a corner. The car overall just becomes easier to keep on track, especially in low traction zones like hairpins or other slow speed corners. While turning this setting all the way up might feel like a cheat code as you don't have to do any throttle control, there is one pretty big downside. It has to do with the fact that when the TC kicks in, your engine power is lowered, which gives you less torque and less speed on corner exit. Essentially, finding the right traction control setting is all about balancing the amount of slip you're having on exit with the drivability of how easy it needs to be to get on throttle. The best rule of thumb for me is to run as low as TC as possible where you're still feeling comfortable on throttle. In something like the Irish GTP, for me it's around 4 to 5 out of 11, so around the middle and a little bit below that. Finally, let's talk about ABS settings. This one is quite simple. The anti-brake lock system prevents the tires from locking up under braking, which is quite helpful but it's not on all cars. Cars with ABS include the GT3s, the GT4s and TCRs, and cars without the ABS include the P-Cup, the GTPs, LMP2s and most of the Formula cars. While many believe that ABS is supposed to be on the max setting, that is not actually the case. ABS is actually quite a bit more personal preference and driving style based. If you prefer to have more control over your braking, you can actually lower the ARB, but be aware that if you lower it a bit too Low, you will start to lose the car as you approach corner apexes. The best way to find out what setting suits you best is to load into a session with max ABS and see how that suits you. If you're having problems getting towards the apex or getting the car trail braked into the corner, you can actually turn down the ABS just a little bit and see if that helps you. And then keep on turning it down until you start sort of spinning or losing the run as you get close towards the corner or start locking up and then you probably want to increase it back by one or two and then you've known you've found the right setting. Now that you have a couple simple tips and tricks, I have another guide on how to correctly break into the corner that is important if you want to advance your sim racing. Now I've been Marcus and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.